So hi everybody, uh, thank you for supporting my channel. Uh, today's video is by request. Uh, one of my uh, subscribers has asked about a video for uh, milling feeds and speeds for a Bridgeport style manual mill. So let's get right into it. So the first thing that I want to mention is that um, the information that I'll be presenting in this video is going to be all taken from technology and machine tools. Uh, this book uh, served me well in my apprenticeship. It's the book that I use uh, when teaching my apprentices. So uh, if you have any questions with regards to the content uh, and you have this book or you need this book, um, you'll be able to find all of the information we talk about in the milling section for feeds and speeds. So the first thing I'm going to tell you is that the uh, feeds and speeds that you need to solve for cutting material on a mill uh, are essentially the same as on a lathe with pretty much only one key difference and that's going to be the number of cutting edges uh, that you have on your milling cutter. So because we're not cutting with a single point cutting tool for the most part on a milling machine it's usually a two flute slot drill, a three flute end mill, four flute end mill or a multi flute uh, cutting tool. Uh, what we need to do is accommodate for the number of cutting edges that we have. So we're going to go through the steps uh, to calculate your feed and speed uh, based on the number of cutting edges that you have. Um, keep in mind that uh, whether you're using a high-speed steel tool, a uh, carbide tool, or some other type of uh, coating on your cutting tool uh, will change uh, the feeds and speeds uh, to some degree. So you'll uh, have to get familiar with how to calculate your high-speed steel um, and your carbide feeds and speeds and then that way you can kind of take that information uh, and build off that knowledge to, and, and make the adjustments necessary depending on what the coating is uh, that you'll have on your cutting tool. Uh, the other thing we need to take into consideration is what kind of material are you cutting? Are you cutting aluminum, brass, bronze, uh, cold roll, hot roll, um, whatever other variety of metal you're cutting or, or whatever alloys are included in that metal have to be considered uh, when uh, we calculate our feeds and speeds. For the purpose of today's video then, uh, let's consider how to calculate uh, the speeds and the feeds uh, for high speed steel uh, cutting aluminum and carbide cutting aluminum. And then I'll show you the chart that I use so that I can um, figure out uh, how to calculate feeds and speeds uh, for other materials. So let's get started. So the first thing that we want to do is just a refresher on how to solve the spindle speed on your manual mill. So just like on the lathe, remember we're just turning a spindle, right? So uh, whether the spindle is horizontal or vertical, uh, we use the same um, formula for solving uh, spindle speed. So we're going to use the shop fo floor formula, sorry. We're going to use the shop floor formula and uh, that is four times cutting speed divided by the diameter of, in this case, the cutting tool. So on the lathe, uh, the diameter, right, was the material. And on the mill, uh, this will be the cutter, right? So essentially what we're solving when it comes to diameter is we're solving uh, whatever is spinning, right? So on the mill, it's the tool that's spinning. So that's what we're going to solve first. So let me just show you the uh, chart that I use for uh, solving my uh, spindle speed. Um, I'm just going to switch over here. Just have a look here. Uh, this information is found on page 470. So uh, this is the cutting speed information. Now, what we had said is we're, let's start with high speed steel cutters uh, cutting aluminum. So if you look in the column on the left hand side under high speed steel cutter under feet per minute right you'll see aluminum 500 to 1000 cutting speed so we had talked about um when solving feeds and speeds on the lathe we had talked about that range right and um we have to take into consideration when uh, there's a range, um, we can use anywhere between that 500 and that 1000 uh, for our cutting speed um, to try and solve uh, our, our uh, spindle speed, right? Now, 
what do we pick, right? Do we pick 500, 750, 1,000? So that's up to you, uh, really. Uh, really what this is doing is giving us a place to start. So um, I'll, I'll start on the low end. Uh, we can start anywhere, but I'll start on the low end. Uh, that'll be us playing it safe, really, okay? So uh, let's go with uh, 4 times 500, right? And then divided by whatever the diameter of our tool is. So let's imagine uh, we're going to use, um, I've got a half inch um, carbide slot drill. So that's just a two flute uh, end mill, right? So let's uh, say that it's a half inch, right? So this is our formula. So if I wanted to solve uh, my spindle speed, now I did tell you this is carbide, but we're just looking at diameter right now, okay? So this is, uh, let's imagine it's high speed steel, it's a half inch. So four times 500, uh, we know is equal to 2000. Uh, 2000 divided by 0.5 is going to give us 4000 uh, RPM. Right, so this is our uh, RPM that we're trying to solve here. All right, so uh, RPM is going to be four times cutting speed uh, divided by diameter. So if we wanted to figure out the um, spindle speed for the same tool in carbide, which this tool actually is, then what we need to change is the cutting speed, right? And the cutting speed, if you look in the right hand side, so follow aluminum across uh, under the carbide cutter. If you notice, it's a double, right? The, the uh, cutting speed for carbide cutter is double. So if we stay on the low end, right? If we stay on the low end of that, uh, we would go four times 1,000, right? Oh, and I guess that stays the same, sorry. Okay, so four times 1,000 is going to be 4,000 here, right? 4,000 uh, divided by 0.5 is going to give us 8,000. So you can see that because uh, the cutting speed is double for carbide, uh, then the spindle speed in the end is going to be double. Now remember this just gives you a place to start. I, I wouldn't recommend that uh, you necessarily um, take these numbers verbatim and, and crank your spindle, in, in some cases, a manual uh, Bridgeport style mill uh, won't even run to 8,000 RPM, right? So uh, we need to take that into consideration. We don't necessarily wanna max out our machine. And it depends too on um, if the machine's been bumped around, how old the machine is, uh, how good the belts are, uh, etc. So Remember, this is a place to start, but this is your general formula for solving RPM. So what I'm going to do is uh, let's backtrack just for a second. And let's go back to our high speed uh, steel uh, cutter. Uh, so we know that that is 4 times 500 divided by 0.5. And we know that that gave us a 4,000 uh, RPM um, solution, right? Uh, our spindle speed, 4,000 RPM. So uh, let's imagine we're going to use this then, 4,000 RPM for our two flute slot drill. Uh, the next step is to figure out um, how fast are we going to move the workpiece into that material. So let's make sure we understand uh, what the feed rate is that we're going to be solving. What exactly is our feed rate? So feed rate is defined as the distance in inches in, or millimeters. In this case, we're talking inches, right? Uh, so it's the distance in inches per minute that the work piece moves into the cutter. Okay, so it's how quickly or how slowly that we take that piece of material and we move it into uh, the rotating cutter. Uh, remember for uh, feed rate on a lathe, uh, we would take the RPM that we solved and we would multiply it by the feed uh, that we would find in our chart uh, for materials for a lathe using high speed steel cutters or carbide cutters. But this was the formula to solve your feed rate on a lathe, okay? 
Uh, what we want to know is what is the feed rate uh, formula for mill. And essentially all we're doing is we're looking at a chart just like we did for the lathe. Um, so the mill chart, as you see here, the mill chart is recommended feed per tooth. So let's go back to our uh, aluminum row and uh, let's uh, slide all the way down to the end mill column. Okay, so follow aluminum across to the end mills in inches. And notice that the recommended feed per tooth for an end mill cutting aluminum, 11 thou. What do we do with this information now? So first thing we want to do is we want to take our RPM, which doesn't change, right? RPM. We want to multiply that uh, by the uh, feed per tooth, which is 0 0.011, right? But now we have to also include how many cutting edges or how many teeth. So uh, we were talking about using a two flute uh, high speed steel end mill. So it would be times two, right? So this is RPM or your spindle speed times the chip load or the feed per tooth. It's also known as times the number of teeth or cutting edges. And that will give us the feed rate for milling cutters. So uh, let's solve this. Well, let's take our 4,000 RPM. We'll multiply that by 11,000 chip load per tooth. And we'll multiply that by two and we'll see what we get. Uh, that tells us that we should, the recommendation is, um, feed the material into the cutter at 88 inches per minute. Uh, now, again, um, this is the, the uh, recommended uh, feeds and speeds in a perfect world scenario, right? So uh, we don't just uh, take this to the bank and say, well, that's what it is, so that's what I'm gonna do. Um, it, it will be fairly close to this. If you have a new machine, uh, you have solid work holding, uh, you have new tools, uh, the machine hasn't been bumped around, um, using coolant, uh, making sure that you have a perfect world scenario, you should be able to set up your machine uh, at approximately uh, this spindle speed uh, and uh, feed it at this feed rate. If it were me, uh, I would back off about a third. Now that's not a general rule by any stretch. Uh, that's just my experience. Uh, the machines that I've been exposed to in my career, uh, I would run this about a third less uh, than the recommendation in the feeds and speeds. But I do want to go back to one thing here, just to keep this in mind at all times, anytime we're machining anything, um, the feeds and speeds formulas are a place for us to start. Now, once we get into CNC machining, uh, we can almost just 100% rely on starting wherever the formulas take us because of the rigidity and uh, the uh, efficiency of CNC machines. Um, but don't be afraid to start a little bit slower, a little bit lower, until you get a feel for it. The other thing that we want to consider is what is actually happening. Uh, what does the tool look like? What does the material look like as the tool is moving through? It, is it, um, it, are the chips going dark brown or are they staying kind of that uh, aluminum color, maybe a little bit bluing, which would be better, right? Or are they getting uh, overheated as those chips come off? Um, is it smoking? Is it squealing? Uh, what does the machine sound like? So we, we want to be observant of um, uh, the sight, the smell, the feel of our machine uh, as we uh, apply the feeds and speeds that we use. So again, don't be afraid to start a little bit on the low side and work your way up to um, a comfortable feed and speed for your manual mill. Uh, I'll see you in the next video. Ha <laughs>